Good morning, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. It's a little bit of a sad day. Today we leave Ghent, we go to Brussels, and then our trip is pretty much over. That's the last city that we're going to go to, I believe. Now, it's going to be quite an adventure because all day yesterday I kept seeing all over Ghent people wearing um, ribbons and wearing flags on their back for Catalonia. And we didn't know what was going on. We found out that there's a giant protest in Brussels today. 50,000 people expected. Um, they are <laughs> protesting Spain and doing it at the EU, the European Union. So we're going to be walking into a full-blown protest. And I guess I'm lucky that I got a hostel early because every hostel in Bruges and Ghent, everything, they were awful. I even heard the, uh, the person working the counter today saying they had one opening here and everybody's kind of traveling in a group. So this could get wild. We're going to be walking into a protest. So days with Jordan the Lion, heading to Brussels. Let's go. We got about a half an hour walk to the train station. God, I'm going to miss this city. I think if I were to come back, this is the city I would stay in again. This was a great city. All right, we made it to my changeover at the St. Peter's station. Now we're heading to Brussels. All right, obviously we're in Brussels and only about five minutes away from my hostel. And what the devil is the, what the devil is that? All right, the Brussels five found my hotel. All right, I'm all checked in here in Brussels, and uh, man, I just realized that not only did I forget one of my camera batteries for my new camera, but I also forgot the only charger that came with it. So I just had to order another one through Amazon so it'll be delivered at my house. So I'm gonna have to limit what I do on night vlogging uh, since I only have one, the battery that came with the camera, I have that charger, but my backup batteries are gone. I will tell you this, because of the Euro to American dollar transfer. This has been a pretty expensive trip. Everything, the transfer is basically like 75 cents or 75 cents to the Euro. So everything that, you know, is like one Euro, it actually ends up costing me like a dollar 30 or whatever. So just with everything, it was a lot more than I thought it was gonna be for this trip, but totally worth it. The lady at the hostel told me that I had just got here a little bit after all the protesters. She said, I've never seen so many people. So she thought they were marching down to Parliament. So we'll probably end up down there. Here's a statue to a man named Francois Ennisons. I'm not really, I don't know. Brussels isn't really my kind of city. Just from the looks of it so far, I actually contemplated hopping on a train and going to Waterloo. But uh, I don't know if I'll have time. So the guy that I hitched back from Paris with, um, he actually lives in Brussels and I mentioned to him, I said, hey, Waterloo's not too far, how far is it? And he goes, ah, driving, it's about 30 minutes or whatever. I go, well, train, how long? He goes, probably not that long. Um, I said, how is it? Is it pretty cool? He goes, I'm French, I've never been. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, French people don't really go there. And so when I was at the, uh, the train station, waiting to go back to Ghent, the girl who I um, befriended and everything we hung out, I told her he said that and she goes, that's a very old mentality. She said, you, like that's usually something only the old people do. It's uh, the equivalent, she said, those are the same uh, kind of people around here that will always say like, refugees should go back where they came from. She said, meaning like the Belgian people are the refugees. So it was an interesting little political thing that I learned from her. I didn't know that was going on here. I figured what we would do first, first thing in the city was come see kind of, I guess maybe one of the most notable things in this city. Something that's always on the postcards here. Oh, take a look at this church. Let's go on in. Wow, this is beautiful.
now we're getting a little bit more old world like I like. That mural of the church up there. Let's go see the mannequin piss. Quite literally. I'm pretty curious to see this because online they said it's actually like life size. So it's gotta be a pretty small statue if it's the size of a baby. I don't know, we'll see it. It's like I said, it's always on postcards and it's always kind of attached to Brussels. So I figured we have to come see it, right? I'd say we found it. <laughs> Us and everyone else. Let's get a little closer. Now what's interesting is that they said when people like dignitaries from other countries come, they bring a different outfit and that occasionally there's different outfits on the mannequin. It has hundreds of outfits from various countries, various celebrations. Pretty interesting idea. And I think that is where they house all the outfits. And plus, I, if I'm not mistaken, there's a female version of this in the city as well that they put up. This place smells amazing. I don't know what he's selling, but looks like uh, the old Christmas wine. Look at that place. Very old time looking bar. We found another record store. I tend to dig this one a little bit more. Bob Dylan. I assume that's supposed to be John Lennon. Jim Morrison. I would assume. Especially because of this. And last but not least, I'm not really a fan, but the boss. And of course at the souvenir shops they sell miniature mannequins. And I'm guessing that's probably a life-size one. See here's some of the outfits or some of the types of outfits that they dress him up as. Oh this is neat. It's an antique shop but they're selling you know coins and medals throughout the history of Belgium and France. It's very unique. I mean, especially where I live, you'll never get to see this kind of stuff. Well, that's interesting. Balloon dog. And it won't be too long before I get to see my little buddy Jaw again. I can't wait. Miss that guy. Wow, now that's an interesting concept. This is a tattoo parlor. I dare one of you to get that tattoo. We're having some sort of Philip Seymour Hoffman exhibit coming up. Kind of a hard mural to make out because that fence is there, but it's pretty interesting. Oh wow, that looks great. 1881. Brussels loves colors. Now it looks like we're starting to approach the city center. You can see right in front of me, whatever that building is, they're having a an expo or an exhibit on Pompeii. That's where the Pompeii exhibit is happening. I might go look into that. Don't worry, I'm not glossing over the fact that I'm seeing these gigantic desk lamps. There's like three of them lining this street. Gigantic. I love that they even have the museum all lit up in Christmas lights. Look at that great architecture. And can you see all the desk lamps? That's crazy. Most of the Christmas markets are pretty much usually food, but I'm pretty hungry, so I could probably go for it. Get something I haven't had yet, hopefully. Actually, I'm gonna go in and see if they'll let me film in here. Maybe I'll go do this tour. I may never get to Pompeii, so this might be my only chance. All right, we're doing it. A little pricey, 16 euros. That's kind of pricey for museum, but 
Like I said, I may never get to see this again, so we're going. Wow, you come in here and they show you a film on what happened. And it's pretty rad because it's completely panoramic all the way around you. Look, the walls are coming down. Wow, this is so crazy. It feels lifelike when you're in here. the earthquakes happening we're in it guys we're in it That's amazing. See the volcano is erupting. solidified for eternity. Pompeii was destroyed by an earthquake in 62. Just in case you're not familiar with the story. So this was some of the metal work that they used for their thermal baths. Some of the statues and things that were found in their thermal bath. You can see there's a foot right there. There's a bracelet. And they even used glass. Sorry, the glass that they have everything behind is making it do that weird flickering. Look at the jewelry. 62 AD. And that one right there on the right was actually a perfume bottle. And they say that that perfume at the time would have cost it an average laborer 100 days work. Now they say that the art here depicts an elephant because when the Romans were battling the Carthage forces, I, I'm guessing of Hannibal, um, they discovered elephants and then they started incorporating elephants into their circuses. So you have the Romans to blame if you're a anti-circus. And that is a dog head ornament. There's the business end of a shovel. When I saw this, the first thing I thought was, were they making muffins back then? And then I read the description and sure enough they were. This was a souffle cup. And they would 
put that in the oven. Now what that is, that's actually a loaf of bread. They said that there was somewhere around, um, I want to say 30 bakeries in Pompeii at the time. And they specialized in these loaf, these circular loaves cut into eight pieces. Now these scenes, these depict their fishing. These were their ancient paintings depicting the, uh, the fisherman's movement. And look, you have a couple of old fish hooks. It's kind of interesting how that long ago some technologies haven't changed. So that is a horn for drinking wine out of. There's an animation showing how they would fill it and carry it. See the fermentation process that's happening up in here. And then coming out of there. See, there's one of them right there. And of course they would store the wine in there. Look at the detail on that. And they even say that Pompeii was not especially known for their great detail in ironwork, metalwork. It looks pretty good though. showing their weights and measures. Can you see that? It's a pillbox. Those are the surgery devices, what I was just showing you. Oh wow, look at that. That's a bath. Wow, interesting. Well, let's we'll see what's going on in here. Oh, wow. Those are, those are real. I'm guessing this is like the uh, centerpiece of the exhibit. I can't believe I'm looking at this. Can you guys? Thank God for the low light camera too. I already tried the, uh, the normal camera I used and you couldn't see anything. Wow. God, they were small too. Very, very short, small frames. And my wallet just got a new sticker. That was certainly awesome and certainly worth it. Pretty expensive. They force you to check your coat so you don't do any damage in there, but then they charge you a dollar or a euro to hold your coat for you. You can't win, and now it's sprinkling, but God, isn't that beautiful?
All right, one thing I'll warn you guys about that absolutely sucks about every restaurant that you go into in any place that I've been, Paris, Belgium, the Netherlands, these charge you 50 cents to a dollar euro to go pee. Unreal. Even if you're a patron of the restaurant, they charge you. Check out this Celtic pub. It's got fists coming out of the, out of the walls. It's pretty funny. That sign says the Royal Theatre Tune. I don't know exactly what that means. But I'm guessing he tells the story and then it's back in there. And this place is called Dolly's Bar. Now it's starting to get a little bit prettier. Check this out. <laughs> that bus is made of chocolate. Wow, look at this place. It's a chocolate place, but wow. Pretty immaculate. All the people in yellow that you see, these are all people that were here, as I mentioned earlier, for the uh, protest for Catalonia. And those are the flags. Look at all the statues up there. That is beautiful. Look at this statue that we've wandered upon. Nice Tim Tracker mustache. See all the yellow flags? And there's a, uh, a wine store for Catalans. That's a nice looking church. Of that big stained glass window up there. Now right now I'm trying to get us over to the Royal Palace, hopefully. Look at this art. There's an art gallery here. That is great. Whole part of the body is missing. And what you see in the middle is actually a painting on the other side, see? Love now he did that. Look, it's a statue to Queen Elizabeth. Right behind it, I see a bunch of the protesters, so I'm gonna work my way over there and see if anything's still going on. All right, I see people up here, let's go. Look at the garden maze. Not bad for the winter time, honestly. That's what we just walked through. Oh, I love this building. You can see it says pharmacies and instruments, various things you can buy there, or used to be able to. Look at that building, that is magnificent. That old England building, some great detail. All right, we made it to where I was looking for. Look at this beauty. Wow, look at that king up there. Then look at the detail right up there in the point, right in the arches. We'll get a little closer.
limey to the moon. Well, here's my room in Brussels. Not too bad, it's only a four person room. I think I'm gonna take that bottom one. And we even have a balcony that you can open up and go out onto, which isn't too bad. Decided to buy a couple of these little chocolate bells here. Try them out. We officially leave in the morning. Have a great night, Lionhearts. Hope you guys all enjoyed our European trip. Have a Merry Christmas and see y'all soon. Have a great night. Goodbye.